9 a.m. How are you guys doing? I missed you guys last week. It was, it was, oh, I don't like it. I don't like waking up way late and having my kids crawling all over me. I like to leave the house and let my wife deal with all that and then see you guys. And so my wife's a saint, absolutely love her. And man, but it's good to be back with you guys. The snow has melted and gone away. And now we're going to see 70 degree weather because we live in Virginia. And so that's, that's how we roll here. Man, I'm excited that you're with us today. Whether you are new or you've been with us a while, uh, this is the place for you. This is the place for you to be able to encounter Jesus and be able to walk out your faith. Uh, for, for years, we've been, we've been doing this now uh, over 17 years, and watching the way that God is moving and the way that God is, is sharing life with people. And so if you're just like, man, I, I don't know, they're singing these songs about God, and, and now they're you know, talking about offering, but they told me to chill and sit back and all this stuff. This is a place for you. And, and I'm excited. This I, Not very often do I get to speak on the week that we kind of have the one week kind of throw down, the one week message. Usually uh, we save that for some of our other staff members and then I get to preach like the four week series where you guys are like, man, I'm tired of hearing of that guy. And But this is, I'm excited because last week most of you guys didn't get to hear me and so now I get to talk and I'm excited. I, when I have a week off, it's cool because I get to kind of sit back and relax a little bit and Dan gave a fantastic message last week. You guys give it up for Dan Pollard, uh, our adult ministries pastor. Um, many of you guys, even though you're clapping, you didn't hear it because you weren't here. And so because it was snowing, you were like, we're just going to have a snowball fight with our kids and, and everything. And so I, I definitely encourage you to go back in the Forefront app or on the website and the podcast and listen to that message as we closed out that series. Uh, man, it was just really great. And so today we kind of want to do a one-off, one-week kind of just punch in. And, and we initially had talked about doing this revolving around serving and revolving around going going out to others. And there's these last words, there are these last words of Jesus that talk about this in the very before he goes up into heaven after you know he's conquered death in the grave like he went and he died and everybody was like good we're done with that guy. But Jesus conquers death and everybody's like oh man this is amazing. This is what God had foretold. And before he gives these parting words to his disciples, his closest followers, and he says, you know what you need to do? You need to go out and you need to go and share my love and grace and, and my teaching with as many people as possible. And I want you to baptize them. And we watch baptisms happen all the time here in our horse trough because that's how we roll. And, um, and, and he didn't specify where it would be, but for us it's a horse trough. And he says, I want you to go out and baptize people. I want you to tell them about me, and I want you to tell them to keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And so for the last over 2,000 years, that's continued to happen. I was like, man, we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to set it up, and then we're going to do this missions meeting, and everybody's going to be like, I'm going to go and do that. And I was like, and, and I was convicted about it. Uh, we write our messages out in advance, and about four weeks ago, I was sitting there, and, and I did want to talk about the last words of some people, but... I was like, I don't think we can go there just yet. I don't think that we can go to that place just yet because I have a feeling and, and there's this kind of nudge. And if you've been following God long enough, you kind of get these nudges. And, and when you first start doing it, it feels just kind of like a little bit of a push or maybe even a whisper. And then after you follow God a long time, if you're really in tune, if you're really praying with God and you're reading uh, his word and you're doing all this stuff, and you've been at this a while, eventually after a while, it just feels like shouting. You don't hear like an audible voice. You're not sitting in the middle of Panera being like, God just spoke to me, like freaking out. But like you have these kind of pushes where God kind of does something and you realize like, all right, God, I hear you loud and clear. And, and honestly, it was not about us as a church. It was like, hey, Jason, I, I don't know that you, if you talk about that, I don't know if you would even be ready for that. Because I don't know if you've really found joy in just me. And, and, I, and I don't know about you, and if you're new to this, you might be like, what I'm about to say sounds ridiculous, all right? Like, what I'm about to say in, in this, it, it sounds like some Star Wars force kind of, you just be like, did he lose his mind? Um, for, for those of you guys who followed Jesus, you kind of get it. And I give you permission if you don't follow Jesus and you're just like, I, I'm not there yet, that's okay. But 
God and I started, it, this is what we call prayer or what I call with God uh, bickering back and forth. And he tells me and I bicker to him. He doesn't bicker at me. He just tells me and I get, art, I get mad at him. Um, he's like, hey, Jason, you need, you need to find joy in just me because I don't think you're there yet. And I'm like, I'll lead a church. God, what are you talking about? I got like, I kind of get defensive. Yeah, I, I get like, I buck up with God and it's God like who does that? Who's like, I'm going to take you on, God. He's like, do you know who I am? You know, and so I kind of have this dialogue with God about this. And I realize I, I'm not there yet. That, that, and for you and I, if we're being honest, going and serving somewhere and going and doing something, we, we have to backtrack and be able to find joy in God and Jesus first. Like, our life can't be supplemented by a worship song. Our life can't be supplemented by a Bible study. Like, at some point along the way, it has to be that, that my relationship with Jesus could sustain me if I was on an island alone with nobody else. Do I need all these other things? And, and it was like God was kind of pressing, and he's like, do you really have joy? in just me. And I didn't like the answers that I was giving back to God, and, and it made me wonder. And so I kind of, you know, in talk with God, and again, it's not an audible voice, but it's like, all right, God, I wonder if this is how the rest of us kind of sit sometimes. And so about four weeks ago, I just decided, I was like, I'm not going to preach a message that makes people feel guilty about serving, so they go serve. Not that that was the intent, but that's how it felt. It was like, here's all these great things, and here's all the other stuff that people do, and so you want to go serve, right? And if you don't serve, like, you might feel weird. Um, I was like, I don't know that that's the point of this. I think the point of following Jesus is to, shocker, just follow Jesus. And so I, I want to backtrack some, and I want to talk about the last words of this guy named John, who followed Jesus, who talked with Jesus. And if you have a Bible, I want you to open up to 1 John chapter 1. And if you don't have a Bible, we give them away for free at the Get Connected table in the lobby. You can pick one up for free today. There's no catch. You don't have to fill out a card or anything like that. You can also download an easy-to-read translation of your Bible. Just search Bible app, and you'll search and see this little icon, something, <coughs> excuse, something similar to it, and we'll be over there, and that's really easy to do. And you can download the Forefront Church app, like I mentioned before about Dan's message last week, and be able to keep up with messages and small group stuff. Uh, but this year, we're going to be transferring over to a new mobile app, and so at some point, You'll have to keep watch on it, uh, but it'll have great stuff in it, and I'm going to start talking about it a little bit, because it'll have a Bible inside the app, and it'll have notifications inside the app, and all kinds of other things in there to help you out. It'll have a digital connection card, and we're transferring over that, so at some point I'm going to say, stop downloading that app and download this app, but for now, download that app, um, and it, that was kind of funny, and so download that one, and today I want to look at this passage in John that... Um, John, because these are the kind of his last words, um, almost on his deathbed. He's written uh, the the now Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's these what we call the Gospels in the beginning of the New Testament, and then there's this first, second, third John that John kind of writes uh, as in his later days, in his last moments, and. And he does this, and I want to look at this because of all the references that we see in the New Testament. If you spent any time reading, you'll see especially in John, he refers to himself, which is kind of a little bit arrogant, but true. He refers to himself as the one that Jesus loved. It was like, well, I think he loved everybody. Um, but he, in, in other passages he looked through that, he is kind of the the best friend of Jesus. And I, don't, I know that if you want to know anything about somebody, you don't go and ask them. You ask their best friend. And, and that's for me. Like Tommy was on the announcement video. Like Tommy's one of my best friends. If you want to know dirt on me, 
you go ask Tommy. But he's a friend, so he's going to tell you to pack sand and go away because he would not reveal the dirt on me. But if you want to really know about somebody, you maybe go to their spouse, that's their best friend, or a close friend. And so I wonder, in the last days of John, like what is he going to say about Jesus? And we're in this passage in 1 John. I just want to read the first couple of verses down to verse 4 as we do that today in the New Testament. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at with our hands, uh, looked at, <coughs> and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim it to you, the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim it to you. There's a lot of repetition, and we'll get to that to what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy or or your joy complete. And and I want to really focus in today on your joy, about my joy about our joy together, and what does it look like to follow Jesus? Today's a pretty simple message. There's uh, no song and dance. There's not uh, a lot of of quips and things. I I just want to settle down in the new year. We looked at a finance series, and, and, and that was great, and we watched some people just really, their lives are already beginning to get transformed from that, and we're starting a class that'll help with that. But what does it mean in 2016 to follow Jesus so that our lives would be so filled with joy that the overflow of that we couldn't help but want to serve God and love God and be more with God. And I want to pray for us this morning, so why don't you pray with me? God, I thank you that we get to be a part of this and that we get to honor you and love you and follow you. And whether we're new to this and we're just trying to figure this out and we've had a rough day, a rough week. Uh, Man, 2016 feels like a lot like 2015, and we really just want to stop and press the reset button, that that God, today we would be able to do just that, that we can focus on you and you alone and not all the other stuff that is going on in our lives. God, thank you for loving us even when we don't even love ourselves sometimes. Help us to be more like you and follow your son. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. I put a bottle stand on my little little holder there. Sometimes I get a little <coughs> clumped and uh, get messed up. The other week I was preaching and I was like, <coughs> I was like, I'm gonna die on this stage right now, and it was awful. And so I'm glad we hooked that little thing up there. These are just little tidbits that don't mean anything today to the message. Um, that was for free, by the way. Today, I want to kind of impart on you a little bit of, uh, and especially if you're, if you're a dad, if you're a parent, if, if you plan on one day having little humans, uh, if you don't and you've made that definitive decision, good for you. Good for you. Good that you know. That you're just like, I'm not going down that road. And if anybody pushes you into that, just be like, no, nah, man, I don't want to have little people around all the time. And, and they don't leave. They really don't. I, I have friends that have older kids, and it seems like all their older kids are still coming back. And so you, you're with them forever until you die. And so that's always fun. Um, but I'm looking forward to that, three daughters. And so I, I want to kind of help you out. I, I love being able to help train up my kids to, to be able to share with them, to be able to guide them and direct them. And, and there are things that I have said to them that I never thought would ever come out of my mouth. Things that in guidance with them that I can't believe I have ever said these things. The things that you say, I will never be like my mother, or I will never be like my father. I would never say that. That doesn't make any sense. And then you have little humans, and you're like, I'm becoming them. I'm saying the things that they say. And, and things, and these are things that have legitimately been said. And here's the thing, as a parent, you repeat yourself a lot. Anybody feel me? You're like, I know I've said this like a billion times. 
Like, did it not sink in? I said at one time that we could go to the park, and you remembered it from like four years ago. Be like, hey, remember that time you said you'd go to the park? Go to the park? Yeah, go to the park. I said that when you were one. And you're like, yeah, but I remember now. I can talk now. And you're like, Ugh. and like, but you say other stuff and they don't remember. I've said things, every one of the things on this list I have said multiple times. Don't ever lick your sister during the prayer. <laughs> Why do I have to say that? Because it happens. It's not okay. That, and I've said it more than once. <laughs> Always wear pants at a friend's house. <laughs> if you don't have kids, these are the things <laughs> that you look forward to. When you hug, it's hug and release, not tackle. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. When in doubt, the answer is no. Um, my, my kids have a tendency to think that maybe, just maybe, no, 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 if you have any question, the answer is no. Well, I thought, no. But maybe it just, no. If you were alone on an island with no one else around, if you asked, what would dad say? The answer is no. <laughs> you will have an amazing first boyfriend when you are 30. <laughs> they'll be allowed to date then. Get rid of all those high school craziness. Um, feet are never allowed on the dinner table or in your mouth. I just actually said this one the other day to my oldest daughter, who was biting her feet at the table. If he doesn't have time for Jesus, then you don't have time for him. They repeat this one to me frequently, just so we make sure that it's in the register. Biting is not an official or appropriate wrestling move. <laughs> You'll figure that one out. Color outside the lines, no matter what the teachers say. Be adventurous. In your short life on this earth, I want you to do nothing else but make God smile. Don't let anything or anyone steal your joy. You know, and all these things, you know, some of them are out of necessity. Like, I don't want her or any of them to grow up and, and lick their spouse's hand at the dinner table. They sit down to pray. You know, I don't even know where that started. Uh, but I want them to find joy in God. I want them to, to, to meet a man who loves Jesus more than them, but loves them deeply. And my hope is that I model that so when a boy comes around and tries to woo them with stuff, they'll be like, mm, I ain't got time to play because I need somebody who loves Jesus. But my biggest hope for them is that when they find a joy in God is that they wouldn't abandon it. That there wouldn't be a situation with, with a mean kid. That there wouldn't be a life circumstance. That, uh, that when something derails with a sibling, that it wouldn't rock or shake them. Or when my wife and I have to correct them, that they won't be so bitter or angry about it in their teenage angst. That it would rob them of the joy that God has given them. Or if they do, God forbid, get older and get married, and that person derails from their commitment. That, that they watch a kid that, they're, that they gave birth to, that every facet of their life would be centered around God so deeply, that not that they wouldn't experience pain, but that their joy would be complete in Jesus. That's my goal in life. It is not to pastor a great church. That's secondary. It, it's be with God, love my wife, and keep tricking her into staying with me. Because it's true, I'm married up. And, and teach my kids to love Jesus. The rest of it is icing on the cake to that. And so teaching them and being that father, I want them, 
I guess in a, in a way, I want them to not settle in life. And that's kind of the words that we get in the tone that we get from the best friend of Jesus. He writes a real simple book, a, a few books, and it comes across much like uh, me to my daughters, my dad to me. It comes across in a fatherly tone, in a concerned tone, in a way that he's looking at things. And he writes this later on towards the end of his life. And he begins to write, and there's almost a burden on him because he sees that people are, while they're excited about Jesus, they're like, Jesus' teaching is kind of elementary. Jesus' teaching is kind of Bible 101, and what kind of what, what we want is we want something more than just Jesus. And John's like, time out, back up the train. You mean to tell me that you want something more than Jesus? They're like, yeah, well, we just want this. And if we fast forward to current times, they're like, we just need to do this deep Bible study. And we need to, have you ever heard anybody say that? Like, I just want to go deep. I just, I need to go deeper. I know that like, and we have people say this to us all the time. They're like, Jason, no, don't get us wrong. You're, you're a great Bible teacher. Whoever's up here, Bible, you know, but we just need to go, we, we just down to the depths. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then I start asking them questions about their spiritual. I'm like, when's the last time you prayed? Well, I don't want to talk about that. I'm like, when's the last time you were generous? Like, time, what does that have to do with going deep? I'm like, yeah, it's everything. I was like, because you tell me you want to go deep, but nothing in your life matches up. You live, you, and what, what, and what the people back then, and it, and it happens now, and it's so in tune with this, is people are like, I want to take the teachings of Jesus and Jesus is great. Like, he saved us. Woohoo! Like, we got that. But now I need a Bible study. I need a worship experience. I need, I need to get more and see more and be more. And that is what my faith is going to be on. And John's like, over my dead body, am I going to leave this earth? And my last words need to lead you to a place. He's, he is much like a dad. Have you ever walked into a situation where you did something wrong and your parent is waiting for you? Yeah, you're, you're reliving it right now. You're starting to twitch, aren't you? Yeah, because you're like, I don't want to go back there. Don't bring me back there, Jason. I don't want to. I remember driving. We snuck out, riding our bikes down the middle of the road in the middle of the night, pitch black, and there's a street light at the end. We see three warm, very angry bodies. And it's my mom, my dad, and my friend's mom standing at the end of the street, like run DMC, ready to rock something. They're just there, and we're like, I, I, I'm going to meet Jesus tonight. <laughs> My dad's a big man. He's going to kill me. And, like, and John is writing this perspective as he's watching this, and it's not like the people were, were, and they were trying to leave the church and find other stuff. They were going, they're like, we love Jesus, but we need some ethereal Oprah mess, all right? Like, that's what people were, and we just, we just need to feel. We need a feeling. feeling. He's like, you don't need to feel anything. You need some Jesus, you know, as he's writing this, it's so he writes this from a dad perspective, and I want to read back some of the words that John shares. And it's interesting because if you've ever sat with your dad or a parent or whoever raised you, and they don't, they don't mess around. They don't start naming off all your friends and other places. They're just like, you need to sit down, I'm going to talk to you right now. And, you're, you, and if you utter anything, they kind of give you the look, and you're like, all right, I'm going to sit down. John's not mad. That's the thing. Like, he's not mad. He actually wants to share with them from such a loving place. And it fits today in our current context so well about what it means to follow Jesus. Verses 1 through 3. It says, that which was from the beginning. He's like, from all of time. In case you were wondering, that which we have heard and we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Life appeared, we have seen it, we testify to it, we proclaim it to you, the eternal life which the Father has appeared to us. We proclaim to what we have seen and heard. He's like, listen, I need, I know, if you ever sat with your parent or your dad, your mom, whatever, and they just keep repeating and you're just like, I've already heard this. 
I'm you, and they're like, what? And they're, why? Because they need to tell you again and again that billionth time that you told them, don't jump on the couch, don't lick your sister during prayer, don't like do that. And he's like, listen, we've seen it, we've reclaimed it, and he talks about it. And for a second, I kind of want to step back. And... It's interesting the way that, that John talks about this, because he is Jesus' best friend. He sat with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. There's a, a point during the Last Supper, this time right before Jesus is crucified, where they're all together. You may have seen the painting of this. What we get in the writing of this is that he was so close to Jesus that he is reclining on the Son of God. He feels so close to him, he's like, I'm just going to kick it right on you right here. And just relaxing on him. He, like, his head is touching Jesus' beard, all right? Like, they, he is with Jesus. He is continually sharing, like, I was with him. I shared with him. I, I walked with him. I talked with him. I interrupted him. I did we everything. I saw it. I was a part of it. And, and John hears about other people talking about derailing from that, and he's just kind of dumbfounded. He's like, wait a second. Like, I was with him, and you want to know more? You want to go deep? You want to, I've heard people share it this way. They said, I want to, I, I just need to experience Jesus. I need to raise my hands. I need to cry. <laughs> like, and I'm like, what? They're like, no, I need to, I don't, I need to, that church, they just, I didn't, and this is the thing that makes me, I didn't feel the spirit. They're like, and people will come here. Like, or they'll be like, I was at this church, and I didn't, but I didn't feel the spirit. It's like, what's the spirit feel like? They're like, what are you talking about? Like, you're a pastor. I'm like, I don't know. I, 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 I feel my pants. Like, I feel myself, but I don't, what are you, what are you talking about? And there's these, this verbiage and this ethereal stuff, and John's kind of writing this, and he's like, listen, like, what exactly are you looking for? Like, I'll hear people tell me, they're like, you need to read this book, and they'll hand me a book. You need to read this book. This person knows Jesus. I'm like, that's cool. Like, I got this book. It's called the Bible. Like, I love it. Like, I read other books. I read all the time. But they're like, no, 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 you need to listen to this podcast. This is so good. Or, or this person, I just know I'm there in love with you. And, and, I, and I love that, like, people look, you know, to other people. I think that's good. We've even talked about that, how you need somebody that shows an example. But at some point, do I, do we hijack the relationship with Jesus to supplement it with something else? It, you know, I've read all kinds of books, like five different, six different guys, and they ask this question. Um, there's one of the guys, uh, Tulian Trevigin, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and, um, and he said, Jesus plus nothing equals everything is the name of the book. I've quoted it a couple times from the stage, and that book has rocked me. It's like, is Jesus alone enough for my life? Is Jesus alone enough to get me through Every, is Jesus alone? If I was, again, if I was on an island alone with nobody else, is Jesus enough? Or do I need to look for somebody that runs around, you know, singing kumbaya, who just prays all day long and doesn't even go to a job and doesn't wear designer clothes because all they're thinking about is heaven? And like, I'm going to follow them because they're so spiritual. Like, I, that, I don't need any of that. You and I don't need any of that. What we need is Jesus. But I think it's kind of, and even in our culture, it's like, what's the next best social network? What's the next best job? What's the next goal for my kids? Where's the next place that I can go? Everything is about the next level and the next thing and growing and moving. And you're, you and I grow in our faith because we do this after a while and we grow in that and you'll learn if you stay and you're a part of this. Jesus is absolutely amazing, but there is no next level past the Son of God. And, and, and I'm preaching this for my own self. <laughs> because there are days where I look to other things, if I'm being honest, other than Jesus. And John has kind of this urgency. You know, people are looking for knowledge. People are talking, I just need to know more. All I know is that every person that met Jesus need to know that I sin. I make mistakes. 
I'm going to keep making mistakes. And so I need Jesus to cover that, and I need to follow him because my life's better with him than without him. It's like we can read through the rest of these pages and argue about political points and whether or not it means this in this context or that context, but I think that it's about following Jesus. And so when we begin to supplement it, even with and the, the, the pull was like, let's talk about missions trips and then if we do it, whatever. But I've heard people who have gone on missions trips. I went with a person that went on a missions trip, and they, but I knew the day that we got on the ground that their life, as we started talking, whatever, that their life was a train wreck. And, not, and we all have train wrecks, by the way. And if you don't think you have a train wreck, you just can't see it because you're knocked out at the wreck. You're going to come to and go, oh, yeah. We all have it in some way, shape, and form. But with this individual, what they were doing is they went on the trip. They're like, maybe this trip will reignite my passion. Maybe this trip will fix my marriage. Maybe this trip, and they walked through all these different things that they thought that it would be. And even as we landed in the United States, the first thing that started to happen was the same thing that was happening before they left. The trip didn't do anything, and they ended up getting divorced, and I've never seen that person in church ever again. That trip didn't do anything because the trip isn't the point. The point is having a relationship, a joy with Jesus. And, and, and John just keeps repeating himself like a parent. He says, what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've touched, what I've felt. He's like, listen, I, I touched. If he was coming out saying, like, I touched his beard, like, he's real, he is there, he's right, and it's interesting, like, he just goes on and on, and then he gets to these words that, that create kind of a pause for us. He says, so that, and, and it's like, listen, he reads through these things, and it's not going to be in these verses on the screen. I just kinda, he says, listen, from the beginning, I've heard it, I've seen it with my eyes, I've looked at it. He even makes sure that he knows, he says, I touched him. In case you think this is all crazy talk, I was there, I looked at him, hand to hand, beard to beard, all this stuff, touched him, you know, because that's what men did back then, they grew beards, just aside. And so... <laughs> Listen, with, because of all this, so that, and basically what he is about to lay out, I was with him, you think it's more than Jesus, I want to tell you the reason that we, that we do this. We're like, all right, I'm listening, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. He basically gives us a fill-in-the-blank period to what it is of Christianity. I want you to understand I was a witness to it. I saw it. I heard it. I, I smelled his morning breath. I was there. I was there when he fed a bunch of people, when he walked on water. It was a little freaky. And all of these pieces, I was there when he died. And then he was walking around. He had holes in his hands and holes in his feet. And he went into heaven and he told us to do this. I want you to know for all the people that are abandoning Jesus and want something more, that he was there, that he was real. And I need to tell you all this because because he is enough so that you will just simply sit and be content with Jesus alone. Not anything else. I just need, I need a, a more rocking band. That'll do it. Like, I need a, a better speaker, which I would agree with you. You need a better speaker. All right? Like, I need a better, like, in all these other things, he said, listen, no, it is Jesus alone that we find our joy in and in nothing else. And I've been convicted of this myself in my own life because there are temptations, and I know they're for you, and, and I wrote down some of them in here, you know, um, Bible knowledge, um, it, the, the spiritual buzz. Like, I, I look on social networking, I'm like, are people checking in? Are people, like, posting about it? Do they think my sermon was good? Yeah, whatever. Um, social approval. Um, a temptation for me in my role is, is if I preach a good sermon. I was telling Dan this earlier when I was walking through it. Like when I preach a good sermon, I walk off the stage and it's like I don't even touch the ground. I'm like walk off the stage and I'm like, boom! Like that's the feeling. I'll get down and the first thing I'll do, I'll lean over to Carrie. Be like, what you think about that message? We'll be in the middle of communion. I'll be like, what you think about that message? She's like, it was good. Because she'll tell me if it's not good. She'll be like, you need to change that message. You need... 
But, it, but it's true, and, and, and I have God kind of pressing on me as my joy complete. And I, if I have to be honest, there are days where it's not been trying to, um, to, to redefine some of that. And so, like, I deleted the Facebook app off my phone. Some of you guys, you, you got the hives right then. Like, deleting that off your phone, oh, I can't do that. Why? And I deleted it off my phone, and I felt it, like, the next few days. Because you would roll over in bed, and the first thing you do, what? You've what? Because Mark Zuckerberg got you trained like Pavlov's experiment. And you just like, what's everybody doing at 6 in the morning? Oh, they're baking a cake. Oh, their kid was getting sick. I'm glad my kids are still sleeping. Ooh, that concert looks good. And it, and, and it ruined me for like the first week. I was like getting the shakes and stuff. I'm not kidding. I, I've been trying to be more healthy too. And um, here, this is an immediate thing that will help you question your joy. I've been uh, getting rid of red meat and soda. Um, it's like God's forsaken me. Like I love, like I would drink a couple sodas a day and like nothing says God loves you more than a big bacon cheeseburger. And like, and so, or like a show ends, um, it's getting ready to come back on February 14th at 9, 9 p.m. We'll work on that. And, um, but then the show ends, and you walk around like on Sunday nights. I have a show, and it's been off for a while. And the first Sunday night after it was off, I'm just kind of, I get home after service. I'm just kind of wandering around the house. I feel empty inside. And I'm having this conversation with God, and if I'm being honest, like there are moments where with, between God and I, I'm like, why am I not happy? I'm not I, I, why do I not have this joy? I'm like, because I don't have an app? Because I don't have a Coca-Cola? Because a show? And whatever it is for you, and I share that stuff to let you know, but the only reason that I should have joy is because Jesus loves me. And I sang it when I was a kid, even though I didn't even really know about God. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones in him belong to me are weak, but he is strong. yes. Jesus loves me. But God left me because I, no, God didn't leave me. It's that I don't find my complete joy in him. And, and I have to say to God, God, I'm sorry. And I wonder about you and I when we try to supplement it with other things. That maybe if, maybe if, if I just change this in my life, then, then everything will be okay. You probably do need to change that. If you feel that weight, the things that I'm changing in my life, I need to change, but those aren't the things that should bring me joy. It should be Jesus. And he writes at the very end of that in verse four, we write this to make your joy complete. Our joy, your joy complete. It's an old man. I love the, at the end of life, we get real when we get older. Um, there, there's something to be said for going gray and embracing it. Uh, there are people in my life that are older that have gone gray, and you need those people in your life too, too that love Jesus, but love Jesus more than you, so they can say, I've been at this a while. I'm older. You're younger. I love you. You're dumb. You need to do this and do this and whatever. Um, people that are your peers, usually, um, occasionally they'll get the courage, but most of the time it's, I'll be praying for you. No, we need people in our life that will tell us that's stupid and just tell us. And what John's saying is, listen, it is only Jesus. If you want to take home something today, we always have a takeaway. It is just Jesus. He is an old man at the end of his life saying, you're chasing all this stuff, and I know you want all of these different things, and you're great, and you're going to make it, and God loves you, but the only thing that you can hang your hat on at the end of the day is that it is just Jesus and him alone. That is the only thing 
that can sustain you and I. You know, when Jesus had this interaction with his disciples, he was sharing with them and uh, later on in his life, when he was trying to explain to them what God's joy is, they're like, we want that. And he kind of, he has this intimate moment with them where he shares, you know, that God is revealing his love through me. Like, you actually get to experience God's love through this, and I want you to share that with everybody else. And I see it, I see a glimpse of that premise when I share with my kids and the light bulb moment goes off. Where, and I see it and I go, I, I may not have to say that again. But John, at the end of his life, is repeated and repeating. He said, listen, the only way that we can have this life and this existence is with Jesus alone. It is just Jesus. And no matter where you are in this life, whether you're a seasoned Christian, you feel like you got it, which you don't, you don't. If that offends you, I will help you find another church. If you're a new person to faith, if you're trying to figure this out, and you're, I, I'm so glad that you're here. But when we start putting other things before Jesus, we always get it wrong. And my hope, before a missions trip, before, before serving, before anything else, all of those things are beautiful, but that we would get to a place as a church where it is just about him. And when we get that, all those other things will begin to happen out of the overflow, not as a supplement. Would you pray with me?